Okay, everyone. So today is the final uh, lecture uh, and uh, information relating to the Strand 2 standards. Today, we're going to primarily focus on Standard 2.4, which I'm calling the legacy of the progressives. So the standard itself is students will evaluate the short and long-term accomplishments of ineffectiveness of social, economic, and political reform movements. So essentially, how impactful were the progressives, their legacy? Okay. Now, there is no essential question for today and to submit into Canvas like there typically is. So before you stop this video and just move on to something else during your day, I do want to say that the essential questions that I would have put onto this are now going to be part of the quiz for 2.4 that you will be taking next class period. So even though you are not doing the essential questions in this, you will eventually do so in an assessment, a more of a high stakes assessment. So I encourage you to stay because I am going to give you plenty of information in order to successfully answer those questions on that quiz, which will be in the form of short answer. So as far as the context goes of this era, what we're talking about, you know, the, the United movement the progressives just never was. It, it's not a united front. Progressives come in many different shapes and forms. Um, and what I mean by that is there, there's different movements fighting for different things. And, you know, they are aimed at different goals and not all together. So, you know, some of the progressive movements were fighting for economic reforms, the breaking up of big businesses, the, um, the end of child labor, other things like that. Making government more honest, more efficient, more democratic, things we'll talk about is probably one of the most long-term effects as far as how the progressives change the American political system. They also are protecting to fight for social welfare, um, you know, helping the poor and giving them opportunities to have, you know, basic needs covered and so forth. Those are things they're going to fight for and in some cases succeed in. And then they're also going to try to promote for moral improvement. You know, we talked about the temperance movement, how it's going to fight for that moral improvement because the temperance movement thought that alcohol was the root of all that was evil in society. Prostitution, um, theft, murder, all of those things they blamed on the presence of alcohol. But despite the successes, there's also debates about how, how effective were these uh, reforms and how much did they influence the world we live in today. So this is the information I'm planning to give to you to evaluate so that you can effectively answer the questions that you will see on the topic 2.4 or standard 2.4 quiz. So as far as short-term successes, right, you know, the temperance movement, it does succeed in gaining the 18th Amendment, which would ban the sale of alcohol in the United States, but only for about 13 years. And there's also an argument to be made that even though alcohol was outlawed in the United States, it did not necessarily curve the use of alcohol. In fact, some people would argue that in, in some cases increased the use of alcohol. And it did only just end up making most Americans criminals, even the presidents of the United States during the 1920s in the Prohibition era had wine cellars in the basement of the White House. And so, you know, even the president would be considered a criminal by that standard. So even though they succeed in getting the 18th Amendment, they don't really succeed in what the 18th Amendment was intended on doing, which was to curb the use of alcohol or get rid of it altogether. Unions had various degrees of success, too. You know, in the short term, the, the, a lot of workers were able to get better pay, working conditions. But some unions were fighting for something more than just kind of the workers, uh, you know, directly kind of infected by their jobs and such conditions, pay, hours, all of those things. Some of the unions were fighting for something much bigger, to overthrow the system of capitalism in favor of a more friendly system where the government has more control over things. Um, and I would say overall, they did not succeed in that. And some labor unions, which were very popular at times, end up going away of the dodo is because of, you know, Americans' attitudes changing towards about unions, um, especially when we talk about the Knights of Labor, which was one of the largest unions uh, in its era, if not the largest. And many Americans, you know, were turned off by that after the Haymarket Square riot in which, uh, you know, the union itself was blamed for being uh, a place where extremism kind of breeds. So then they also have tariffs, which are taxes on imported goods and uh, import and exported goods. The um, Wilson administration got rid of uh, many of the tariffs and lowered them to historic lows um, because uh, it was a progressive uh, movement to try to get that. So. 
the the reasoning behind that was they wanted to make it easier for people to be able to afford items and tariffs made things more expensive. And so by getting rid of those, that was something that progressives did succeed on, but it was short-lived because by the beginning of the 1930s, new tariffs would come along and replace the ones that were gotten rid of by Wilson. And so that would be considered a short-term success for the progressive era. And then poverty. Poverty still persists today. You know, Despite the fact that they were able to get rid of the, the uh, tenement housing uh, and, and, and improve the housing and such, poverty and the issues that uh, link to poverty still persist in society today. Now, I will say that it, being poor in the progressive era, the Gilded Age, was much different than being poor in modern American society. But... The, the fact that poverty still persists and it still is continues to be an issue that many people are trying to find solutions to shows that the progressives didn't fully succeed in, in creating a long-term solution for those, those problems. The long-term success of the um, progressive era and the progressives, you know, one thing, they changed the political system of the United States forever. And they make it more democratic, giving more power to the people. And they do this mainly at the state level by things like the ballot initiative, which gave the people the right to petition, um, create a petition to put a a uh, law on the ballot for people to vote for directly, bypassing state legislatures instead. Um, you know, the direct primaries gave people more power to who they want to elect as their candidates for who are running for office. Um, recalls to get rid of corrupt political officials before the end of their political terms. You know, these are all things that gave more power to the people in terms of what is said and done in their government. The 17th Amendment, which made it legal for the... Um, I'm oh, sorry, train of thought. 17th Amendment made it so that the um, you know, senators of, of each state were elected directly by the people rather than chosen by the state legislatures as it was done before. The 19th Amendment has humongous implications on the um, the democracy of our world today, you know, and so we have roughly half of our population has been given uh, the right to vote, which we we're being denied before. And so by giving women the right to vote, you know, it forever changes our country. And it also, you know, changes like the power of the people persona again, you know, you've given more power to the people. It was originally in the hands of mostly white, uh, Amer white males, um, to a lesser extent, African American males. And now it's to pretty much all men and women, um, but at this time, 19th Amendment, the age of voting was at 21. It'll change later to 18. We'll talk about that down the road. Economics, you have huge end of child labor laws, and that comes about because of the progressive movements. Things, regulatory uh, laws that regulate business, rather than completely taking over businesses, like in some cases they do in Europe, they simply regulate these private businesses, say you must do these things to protect the consumers and to not do unethical things in business, and you have to pay, play fair by the rules in which the government establishes. A major shift from what was happening before with laissez-faire economics, where the government was simply, we're not part of the business world, they are very much part of the business world by regulating them, and then to some extents more so, like, breaking up monopolies. And so this is the era where monopolies die, they end. You know, there's still some that do exist today. And there are some companies, very big companies, in which people do think that they are becoming monopolies. But the government has the right to break those up. And they do so because they want to see more competition and more competition is better for the consumer. And so if you have two companies who are competing for a better quality product or a better price product, the American consumer ultimately wins in that battle. Um, so using things like the 1890 Sherman Antitrust Act and the Clayton Antitrust Act gives the government more power to um, interfere into the business world if they see that it's not good for the people. They also uh, succeed in the conservation movement, the national park system, which is still very much around today. And much of the Western states are all federally managed land. And that is in part because of the progressive era. 
the national parks were to preserve the natural splendor, but the managed lands of the federal government, they are to protect the um, resources and to ensure that those resources are not used up in one generation and that they can conserve it over time. But with the progressives also have to discuss about their shortcomings, where they did not succeed and where did they um, fail to, to address in a sense, okay? So one of the things that I would say is a key kind of pro proponent of what the progressives were fighting for and did not get. One of the things that happens in all other industrializing countries is they created some sort of national, publicly run, government run, healthcare or health, uh, national health insurance system. And that's true for pretty much all in, in industrialized countries in the world today. But in the United States, even though the progressives wanted something along those lines, they never fully succeeded in gaining them. And so today our system of healthcare is largely privatized, um, both the insurance and the healthcare itself. And I'm not here to argue one way or the other, but what I am saying is that the progressives wanted this to happen and never succeeded in getting this to happen. And still today, it's a topic of discussion amongst the political realm of what does our healthcare system look like and how can we improve it? And does that include other means of what we're currently doing? Progressives also typically were from specific demographics, uh, particularly native born, um, middle class and white Americans. And so because of that, there is a lack of, and then lack of diversity in that the progressives and such, um, there are causes uh, during this era and calls for reforms that do not get supported by the greater population of progressives, such as the civil rights movement that we talked about when we talked about uh, the Niagara movement and W.B. Du Bois and, and pushing for uh, racial justice, racial equality, um, social justice, and, and so forth. Typically, in this era, m most of these progressives or part of these progressive movements have no um, part in that, that whole movement. And so why many of them do those, those um, reforms that are being called on by uh, African-American leaders, it just do not come to fruition for the most part. And it's a, it takes a long time, over decades, to continue to fight for those causes. Um, and then typically, you know, the, the uh, progressives were, I wouldn't say anti-immigrant, but they weren't fighting for issues that affected immigrants um, as much. They were more fighting for issues that affected native-born Americans. So that's something that does also come as far as the shortcomings with the progressives themselves. So regardless of whether you agree or disagree with what the progressives did, um, you cannot deny the fact, and this is a pretty much a guarantee, is that the progressive movement helps establish the blueprints of what modern America looks today. We have businesses um, that are regulated by the government. That's because of the progressives. We have social programs that are to address some of the things that happen as a result of industrialization and urbanization because of the progressives. We have no child labor in this country because of progressives. You know, there are a lot of things you can say that the progressives changed America as it was to what it is today. And so that impact that they have is a reason why we talk about them in world and U.S. history because of how much they shape our country today. So with that being said, make sure that you take some time to review materials for the quizzes next time. They will cover all the standards of 2.1 through 2.4. On the announcement I've sent out on Canvas, it has all of the links to the lectures and PowerPoints that I've used. So make sure that you're ready to go for that next time. Um, that is something that will go on term one grade. So with that being said, this is Mr. Henry signing off.